Hello, good afternoon to all of you. Um, my name is Anish Majumdar. Coincidentally, um, yesterday we had organized the first stem cell awareness day in Bangalore with several international as well as um, my current company, the Manipal University, and so on and so forth. And it was a very successful event. Taking the thoughts from there, as well as uh, my entire life, I guess, uh, I'm here to tell you about the promise of stem cells. So we all have stem cells. Each and every one of you in your body, in your various organs, have stem cells. There could be pancreatic stem cells, it could be cardiac stem cells or heart stem cells, muscle stem cells, eye stem cells, and so on and so forth. In the year, at the turn of the century, the previous century that is, um, the scientists had speculated that there's something in our body as well as in the mice and the rats and the pigs and the dogs and all the living animals, that there is something looks like that there must be the stem cells. And then the hunt kept on going that where do these cells are, how do they look like, uh, how do they behave, and why are they there in the first place, in our body or in the body of a mouse or a tiger, and so on. Let me start by telling you that what science that we are looking is basically looking in nature. And nature, as it was described by Albert Einstein, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. It is very, very true. So with this, I would like now to take you to a little bit of the history of the stem cells. At the turn of the previous century, I told you that uh, the scientists actually knew that there is something called stem cells, but they didn't know how they look like, where do they exist, and so on and so forth. So let's start. And uh, let's start with this gentleman here. And when you see these signs, you know that they are, these are the Nobel laureates. So the work that he did, Professor E. Donald Thomas, a transplant surgeon, in the 1958, was re received the Nobel Prize in 1990, and there was another Nobel Prize awarded in 2007, and the third Nobel Prize that came more recently is in 2012. So you can imagine in the span of only these many years, the stem cell potential is actually being recognized. That's very important. Now, Donald Thomas, what he did basically is that he actually wanted to see that the cancer patients, the blood cancer, I'm sure many of you have heard about blood cancer, the leukemia and the lymphomas and so on and so forth. So what is the treatment? Chemotherapy. A completely ablate the immune system, completely ablate, and eventually, uh, if its own immune system comes back, the patient might live on, but unlikely, and the patient will all die. So what he did in Seattle is basically he said, okay, let me give it a try. So he actually took the patients, completely ab ablated their bone marrow, eliminated all its bad cells, his or her bad cells, and took the, somebody else who's healthy and does not contain the disease off the bone marrow or off the blood and took the bone marrow out. Bone marrow is something that stays inside our bone, which who of those of you who are actually uh, non-vegetarian would probably like to have it when we have the femur bones in our mutton curry. So that's the bone marrow. So I took the bone marrow, not in the curry form, but in the life form, <laughs> and, and injected into the patients. The remarkable finding that came out of it is that the many, of these, many of these patients' lives were saved. So he postulated that well, inside the bone marrow, there is a cell type that can actually repopulate the hematopoietic system. What does that mean? That means it can create the entire blood in the body of the recipient, and it is now devoid of any cancer cells. Remarkable finding. While that work was ongoing in Canada, in Toronto, 
Till and McLeod were working on the same concept. They were working on a very different, but they were not aware of each other, but they took the mice. So of mice and men, if you read that book. So he took the mice and completely irradiated those mice, got rid of the entire blood system, and took another mouse, fresh, pure, no disease, no radiation, took the bone marrow and put it in there, and again could cure the animals. So you cure it in mice, you cure it in human. So there must be something in there. So basically the work actually that suggested here and here, that actually the bone marrow contains probably stem cells. And it took another number of years for Irv Weissman at Stanford when I was in his lab, although this was not my work directly, um, came out and identified and characterized that hematopoietic stem cell or blood stem cells. And the first cord blood, I'm sure all of many of you have heard cord blood, the cord blood transplantation started. Meanwhile, there was a gentleman working again in the US, Friedenstein, came up with this, another cell type called adult stem cells or mesenchymal stem cells. What it does, it's basically the stem cell in the marrow Two types of stem cells are there, one support the other. And by this support, they actually, as we speak, they are supporting the bones in your body by this support so that your stem cells are at work. So when your white blood cells are getting old and dying, when your skin is actually shedding, these stem cells are continuously working to create the new skin and it's creating the new blood. And that's what stem cells are. Now, while all of these things happening, they are all known as adult stem cells because they are all found in adults. Adult mice, adult human being, normal human beings, suffering human beings, but they're all adults. Then where did we come from? We came from somewhere else. What is that cell, the mother of all stem cells? And that discovery came in 1981, when the first mouse embryonic stem cell line came up. And that embryonic stem cell line discovery, as well as other discoveries, led Capecci, Evans, and Smithies, Olivier Smithies, they received the Nobel Prize for homologous recombination, as well as the creation of the human, of the mouse ESL lines that followed the normal path of scientific development. Jamie Thompson at the University of Wisconsin came up with the first human ESL lines. So what is the difference between embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells? It's very important for you to understand. Embryonic stem cells can give rise to their pluripotent, the adult stems are multipotent. So let me give you an example. The hematopoietic stem cells that Weissman talked about can give rise to your white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. And all types of white blood cells and erythrocytes, when you do the blood count, you see granulocytes, eosinophil, basophil, this, that. They all come from the hematopoietic stem cells. What does the embryonic stem cells do? They create us. We are created from an embryo. So creates us, that means that all the 220 plus organs that we have, they're all created by this, by these cells. Now where have we come from all of this? Here there's another Nobel Prize that went to John Wooden and Yamanaka for creating the induced pluripotent stem cells. So basically what I'm trying to tell you, embryonic stem cell is there, create all the organs that is possible, and by manipulating them in vitro, if you can take, and these are the lines meant for research only, I repeat, these are the lines that are meant for research. And if the parents give the consent for the embryonic stem cell line, then it comes to the laboratory, and then you can create pancreas to cure, cure diabetes. You can create retinal pigmented epithelial cells to cure blindness, and you can do many other things. Adult stem cells, as you can imagine, they are not pluripotent. They are focused. They are focused in different direction. How? The blood hematopoietic stem cells give rise to only blood cells. 
The cardiac stem cells would give rise to everything that we have in the heart. The liver stem cell does everything that is there in the liver organ. But nevertheless, they're also important. In my rest of my talk, I'll tell you two examples that we have been working on, one on the embryonic stem cells, the other one on the adult stem cells. So I'm sure you all you have heard di uh, diabetes. Diabetes actually destroys the pancreas. And here is a normal cadaveric pancreas showing red, green, and blue. And these are all the hormones, that is insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, and others. And if the insulin is not produced, your body, I'm sure many of your relatives uh, are affected with diabetes. What happens if the insulin is not secreted or not functioning properly? And there is a treatment, oral hypoglycemic tablets or insulin injection. But that is only a treatment, not a cure. So one thing one can do is to try to create that from embryonic stem cells. And that's exactly what we did in, uh, in 2007, 8. And what we did is that from the embryonic stem cells, we converted into the laboratory to pancreatic islets. Now you be the judge. Tell me if this looks somewhat similar to this or not. So that means that, that we have been successful in making something like a pancreas. They are not a full human adult pancreas, but they are nevertheless a pancreas. Then, then we actually purified it. This is the insulin positive, high producing cells that can be utilized for transplantation, which actually gave rise to patents all over the world. And I'm citing here in the uh, United States patent. So these suggest what is the importance of the stem cell, that is embryonic stem cells, if can be converted properly into an organ of demand, like India is the diabetes capital of the world. M millions and millions of people are suffering from diabetes. This, there's a treatment available, of course, but there's no cure. If this goes through all the regulatory guidelines, that means stem cells cannot be injected to somebody without the regulatory approvals from the regulatory authorities of the respective countries and the governments. If it does in a proper manner, and if the clinical trial is held, there lies a promise that you can use this in order to cure diabetes. So this actually, now if I take you here, if you look in this, I cite you that the spinal cord paralyzed patients of car accidents, which awfully um, awfully high number in, in India also, but mostly in the US, trial is ongoing, the eye trial is ongoing, and the diabetes trial has just started. All of this thanks to the discovery of all these gentlemen and hundreds and probably thousands of students and researchers and youngsters like you who have dedicated their life in order to do this. Now, the next thing I want to concentrate to you is on adult stem cells. Now, this is actually a Times of India article that came out from Pune uh, last year. I forget the date, I think 31st May or something. Critical limb ischemia is a disease that you may not have heard of. But I'm sure you have heard of a disease called ulcer. Have you? Yes. yes. So ulcer can happen in many places. Now, if a particular person is actually an avid smoker, of the BD or the chewing tobacco and all this, the very young age. It started at teenage or late teens or twenties. They inevitably develop something called critical limb ischemia. What is it? It's all summarized here, but I tell you, as you read, that it basically starts with the rest pain, little blackening of the skin and the foot and the extremely uh, painful foot, uh, foot pain of the affected limb. And what happens then, they go to the doctor and then, the, and then they start noticing, ah, pain, so I'll take some pain painkiller, and it goes away, it comes back, it goes away, it comes back. The vicious cycle kept on, kept on ongoing, and the young person is still smoking. Then what happens? What happens at the later time point is that that gets infected, it becomes an ulcer, it becomes a gangrene, and at that point, the doctor says, one fine morning when he goes to a hospital in Bangalore, Kolkata, Pune, or Bombay, or Delhi, that it will, Sorry, my dear, you're too late. It has to be amputated. There's no medicine for it. There are treatments available. 
some revascularization. You must have heard about the bypass surgery of the heart. Have you? Yes. Good. So you do the bypass surgery in the, in the foot, in the limbs, where the vessels are completely clogged. What is the disease? The disease is, it has clogged the vessels. And as because it has clogged the vessels, the blood cannot flow. So, and because the blood cannot flow, the oxygenation is not there. As a result of which the pain starts, right? Because all the nerves and all that start acting up and the pain. And the pain is absolutely excruciating that people actually can even uh, attempt to commit suicide. So you go with the painkillers and all this, but at the, at the age of 40, 35, 45, these people actually had to undergo amputation. Maybe first the toe, next the ankle, metatarsal, and many times if you search the literature you will see from the, uh, from the knee. So does stem cell can do something about it? And what kind of stem cells does one use? So in my current job, what we are working on, on called allogenic mesenchymal stem cell that comes out from the bone marrow. So these mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells, they support each other. So now if you look into the literature of the stem cells, almost every organ, which I started my talk with, that each and every organ of ours probably does have a stem cell. Why? Because as we age, the mature cells are dying, the signal goes back to the stem cells, please produce some more. The heart needs to function. Please produce some uh, um, islets, because insulin needs to be secreted, because I ate too many chocolates. You know, I need to run, so I need to new muscles. So the muscle stem cell, please make some new muscles. And it goes on and on and on. So in every organ, these mesenchymal stem cells are there. One of the adult stem cells. And they actually help support the stem cells that are going to bring your pancreas, your eyes, your vision, your ear, your hearing power, uh, your ability to smell, your, um, uh, your muscle movement, and your heart function, and so on and so forth. So these mesenchymal stem cells, or mesenchymal stromal cells, which was discovered in the 70s by Dr. Friedenstein, has come completely into a limelight right now. And in that limelight, that what we are trying to do is to take the bone marrow from volunteers, not asking or forcing anybody, from volunteers like you, that, you know, these people are dying. Would you mind giving us an informed consent form uh, so that we can get some bone marrow? We can save these lives. And we do have that. We have gotten the bone marrow. We have the entire process figured out that how to make this mesenchymal stem cells, because a very teeny little amount of cells will not work. You have to expand these cells, you have to characterize these cells, you have to prove in the animal models there are a whole host of guidelines, you have to show the function in vitro, that is in the laboratory. Next you have to show their safety, you have to show that if you inject these cells into the animals, the animals don't die. And once that you have shown, you can go into the human being. So I'm going to show you that what these allogenic stem cells can do and why it is a promise that I told you in the beginning that's the promise of stem cells. And that's what it is. These are the two patients, I can't tell you the names or anything, it's a clinical trial. So it's again an approved clinical trials, going through all the segments of proving, 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 and going to Delhi and to the regulators presenting the data. More data is needed, we come back, we make the data or we, uh, we generate the data, again go back, come back, and by doing this for over the eight, nine years period, we have come to this point. What is it? I told you excruciating leg pain. They can't walk. They cannot put a step, these people, with a critical limb ischemia of, the, of healing ulcers. So I'll show you two examples because ulcer is something that one can easily connect with. Ischemia means less blood supply. It's, 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 not, it's not visible uh, when I present in a slide. So we inject the cells here, we inject the cells around the ulcer. This patient came, this patient came already very late. I told you, the doctors does the amputation. 
So this patient, when came with the second ulcer, his first ulcer had already gotten the, uh, uh, we never came to know of it because he never came. And it, the amputation was already done. And then he developed a second ulcer. And this person came up with this kind of ulcer under the foot. So what did we do? We took our cells, because we have shown that the, if you inject the cells in the mouse, in where the limbs are supposed to be fallen off because of the disease model, had actually not fallen. The mouse completely recovered because of the injection of these cells. So therefore, to the next level, it's a phase two clinical trial data. We had earlier done the phase one clinical trial data to show that it is actually um, therapeutic benefit. So we got the approval for the phase two clinical trial. And what I'm showing you here, when you inject the cells here and around the ulcer and around the ulcer, this is the result you get. The ulcer is completely gone. We can't do anything about it because it is amputated. But this ulcer, this, this terrible ulcer, which would, he would have to go, go through an amputation from here, which is right above the ankle, has not happened. And here, this ulcer, which, which is actually, you can see that how, um, how devastating the ulcer is, and they all have excruciating rest pain and a lot of other problems, has completely healed six months, six months after the ingestion of this product. And this product is called stem cell. And what it does essentially is stem cell. So if I now tell you what stem cell does, it stem cells actually repairs the defect. It repairs the pain sensation of the person by allowing the blood flow. It has regenerated the skin and the blood vessels so that the blood flow is now normal and it has restored the function. That means this person actually can still walk. This person can walk pretty normally without pain. This trial has been registered in the NIH, the National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C. This is the number. And uh, we also do have a United States patent. So with all of this that the stem cell does, where is the field going? The field is going, the growth. I thought that here the theme talk is actually the growth. So what is happening, the growth in the market opportunity? And you can see the multiple business opportunities can generate the stem cell therapies, which I showed you the example. You, can, you must have heard cord blood banking, have you? So, so there it is, you can do the cord blood banking. That's another big industry coming up. And you have the stem cells and ciliaries. Means that they can produce certain factors. And if you don't need to add cells, you can use that factors in the solution and then that can also be useful. And a lot of research is ongoing. So these are the multiple business opportunities, number one. And number two is that the global tissue engineering and cell therapy market by region that is projected. And you can see it uh, almost looks like an exponential rise. And Asia, I should point out, is not very far off. The rest of the world, uh, Asia Pacific, Europe, and US. And in the nature reviews, uh, I believe it's in 2012, I forgot to write down the year, 2012 or 13, has listed all of these companies uh, all over the world and you will find the Indian company uh, and the, all the other companies throughout the world that are listed as the promising companies and working very hard in order to bring the stem cell therapies together. With this, I would just like to take you to the first slide again. So. With all of this work, what we have now understanding is the basic biology. We don't understand all of it. We, we understand very little of it. But whatever little we understand, we can develop promising therapies for the paralyzed, for the blind, you know, for the diabetes. And we can develop for the graft versus host disease and our work that we feel that we can actually help by using the allogeneic bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells taken from volunteer donors through a proper volunteer donation program such as yours, like young people, 18, anything beyond 18, 25, 30, 40, 
and can generate some stem cells, which is not detrimental, not, not at all detrimental to the person who is donating the bone marrow, because the bone marrow, and again, I want to tell you, the bone marrow is going to regenerate thanks to the stem cells. So the person who is donating the bone marrow, his bone marrow will be replenished because there will be signal mechanism coming from the bone marrow. Oh, oh, either some cells have been taken out by the doctor. So let's start making some more. And they get to work. So all of this is possible and coming. And I thank you again. And I want to tell you, all of you are students. I was also a student at one time. And never give up. If you believe in yourself, if you try hard, dedicate, do what you like, you will be good, very successful. Thank you.